Let's talk about point of view. The perspective you tell your story from is one of the biggest decisions you'll make before you even start writing. It has profound effects on your plotting, world building, and character development. Even if you know what the various POVs are, you might not know those effects. Let's explore each perspective so you can choose the right one for your story. There are four major points of view we'll cover in this video. First person, second person, and third person, which breaks down into limited and omniscient. If you aren't familiar with these, don't worry. We'll define them as we go. To understand which POV we'll choose, let's look at each through four different qualities. Connection, voice, information, and ease of use. Connection refers to how easy it is to get the audience attached to the perspective character. Voice is the style of your prose. Information is how the POV affects your exposition. And ease of use is, well, how easy it is to write in that POV. Before we dive in, this video is meant to be a baseline to help you choose a POV that's right for you and your story. But we're gonna make videos over the next few months diving into each of them to explore their intricacies. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. Let's dive into our first POV, shall we? I walk into school. It's the first day. I hope nothing bad happens. Hey nerd, isn't the first person thing kind of cheesy? No, it helps form a strong bond with the main character while allowing the writer to write more stylistically. Who does this guy think he is? More like gives you the excuse to write like a teenager. You know, John Green destroyed literature ah, when he wrote the This dude sucks. And this scene Why is getting way too meta. So Let's cut to homeroom. This point of view is narrated by a character in the story, and is defined by first-person pronouns like I and me. The viewpoint character directly tells us what's happening in the scene and makes commentary about it. So how does that affect your story? Let's start off with connection. First person is the strongest POV in this category. Since the character basically has a one-way conversation with the reader, that naturally develops a deeper bond. Who do you feel more connected to? Someone you've had a conversation with or someone you've only been told about? Seeing the story through their eyes bonds the audience to them. And since the main character tells the story, first person naturally has a strong voice. It gives you the leeway to write more stylistically since you use the character's voice. Again, first person is probably the strongest POV here, which is why you see it so much in modern fiction. Writing in a distinct voice can be fun for the author and reader. But that level of intimacy has its drawbacks, like how this POV handles information. Since you are being told the story by the main character, you generally can't know anything they don't. That makes it harder to communicate important information about the world. Not to mention, how do you teach something to the reader that the character already knows? You don't want them to info dump everything. Either way, you'll have to contrive situations to include important world details, which directly affects your plotting. That can be difficult, which leads us to ease of use. First person isn't the easiest POV to write. You have to consistently write in that character's voice for the entire story. If they sound different from chapter to chapter, that can be a turnoff for readers. You need to share a mind with that character, which can be difficult. First person has a proclivity for telling rather than showing, especially for newer writers. Since they're telling the story, it feels like it gives permission to just spill out everything they know and how they feel about the other characters. Thoughts may be good for connection, but they aren't the place to do a ton of info dumping or characterization, especially not characterization for your other characters. Boy, I just said characters and characterization so many times. Is there another word for characterization? I don't think there is. Personal, per, uh, give them personnel. No, that's the only word. Oh well. So overall, first person can be fantastic, especially if your story is character driven. It naturally encourages connection and can be a ton of fun to read and write something with a unique voice but it can be difficult to pull off and you might feel forced to make plot decisions to successfully share information. Now, let's move on to our next POV. Mm -hmm. 
You enter your house. Then you walk to the kitchen and see your roommate. Hello, roommate. Dude, are you seriously doing the second person thing again? I told you it was confusing and gimmicky. You say... It's fun and interesting. No one else is doing it. Yeah, no one else is doing it because it sucks. You become enraged. I'll show you suck. No! Second person is when the reader is the viewpoint character. The story is happening to them. And traditionally, you don't write prose fiction in second person. It's weird for the audience to read, since you force them to make decisions they might not have made. That's why this POV is usually reserved for mediums where the audience can make active decisions, like video games and tabletop RPGs. I've mainly included it on this list as a warning. Don't use second person in your book, just don't do it. It can work for poetry and shorter pieces, or if you are an experienced writer who wants to do something experimental, be my guest. But Everyone else? Stay away. Levi walks out of his house and looks down at his clothes. In retrospect, they don't look great. He never learned how to match. Hey man, not cool. No, it's all good, dude. Your flaws make you seem more real to the audience. And some of those are hard to show without, uh, you know, leaking your innermost secrets. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. You're a minor viewpoint character that dies in a few chapters anyways. All right, I get it. Wait, what? Unlike first person, third person is told by a detached out of story narrator. Like first person though, Limited follows a perspective character. They just aren't the one telling the story. Instead of pronouns like I and me, you'll find third person pronouns like they, he, and she. While the narrator is objective, they focus on the perspective character, and we can dip into their head to hear their thoughts as first-person lines of dialogue, usually using italics. Limited and first-person are the most common perspectives used in modern fiction, but let's see how Limited holds up against our points of interest, starting with connection. Limited has a strong sense of connection with the perspective character, but not quite as strong as first-person. While we can dip into the main character's head, we don't see the entire story through their eyes. This means you'll have to do a little more work to get the audience invested in the perspective character using their actions and dialogue. But the biggest difference comes with voice. While a character in first person may have a dramatic writing style, an objective narrator doesn't. Both of the third person perspectives rely more on the fundamentals of writing to achieve style and voice. I have a video that covers a few of those you can check out here. But limited stories aren't completely devoid of that characteristic style. Like I said before, you can still interject their thoughts into the story. In terms of information, limited is fairly similar to first person if you have a single point of view character. The narrator is still mostly restricted to what the main character knows. But limited overtakes first person with its ability to easily switch perspectives. From scene to scene, you can change the perspective character. This makes it much easier to work exposition into your story, since you can establish something in one perspective that might have been hard to learn from the main character alone, which brings us to ease of use. In my opinion, Third Person Limited is by far the easiest POV to write, which isn't a controversial opinion. Information is easier to get across, and since you don't have to emulate the writing style of a character, you can basically write how you normally would. Your writing style will naturally remain the same, which might not be the case in first person. That alone makes the drafting process a lot easier. But there are some pitfalls with Limited though. The most common is head hopping, which is when you change POV characters in a single scene. This is by no means a hard and fast rule, but it's generally considered a bad move since it can be confusing for the reader. We'll talk more about head hopping and other pitfalls in our deep dive video though. Overall, Third Person Limited tends to be the most fundamental of the POVs in modern fiction. It's easy to write, it's decent at developing a connection to the point of view character, it's good for information development, and it's decent for writing with a distinct voice. It's kind of the jack of all trades when it comes to POVs, and I'd strongly recommend it for beginners. But 
there is still one point of view left. Levi sat alone in the grass, not moving. Hey man, can you like, do, do something? Don't, or? what the? Are you God? No, I'm the narrator and I, <clears throat> I'm asking you to do literally anything. Like seriously, this is so boring. I'm thinking and enjoying the outdoors. Yeah, but this perspective works a lot better when I can see you doing something, you know, instead of nothing. Well, I am hanging with some friends later if you want to cut to that. <sighs> Fine, yeah. I mean, this was supposed to be your contemplative scene, so you better look really pensive at that party later. Alright? Third person omniscient is when, like in Limited, you tell the story as a narrator who isn't part of the story. But unlike Limited, you don't get to jump into a character's perspective. You don't get to directly hear their thoughts or see the world through their eyes, but the trade-off is that the narrator can know anything. This is probably the most uncommon POV you'll see out in the wild, other than second person. Omni is generally seen as kind of old fashioned, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a time and place. People write in Omni all the time, just not as much as limited or first person. First off, let's start with connection. Since we don't get to dip into the characters' heads, it's naturally harder to develop a connection between reader and character. You'll have to do the majority of that work through the character's actions and dialogue, unlike limited and first person where you have the benefit of the character's thoughts. So where does that leave voice? Traditionally, third person doesn't give any benefits to the voice of your text outside your normal writing style. You might be able to borrow a little voice from the characters in the scene, like in limited, but be careful. Otherwise, you'll end up writing head hoppy limited, which, like I said, gets confusing fast. But there is an interesting gray area where you can kind of blend first person and third person to add voice. Frame stories where the character is someone telling a story can have that voice of first person told in third person. Since the narrator knows everything, it's easier to work relevant information into the story. Obviously, you shouldn't just info dump, but you don't have to contrive plot reasons to drop in details. If the audience needs to know something, you can just weave in that piece of information to give context, and you can easily move the story wherever you need to. That's great if you're writing in an extensive world or have a large cast of characters. But how hard is it to write an omniscient? It depends. Since most modern fiction isn't omniscient, the average reader probably hasn't read a lot of it. If that's the case, you might run into some issues. It's always harder to write in a point of view you haven't read a lot of. That goes for all of them. Omniscient is also particularly full of show don't tell pitfalls. Since the narrator knows everything, it can give the writer a little too much leeway to tell details instead of showing them. More advanced writers will naturally know when to show rather than tell, but if you don't have that instinct yet, Omni can develop some bad habits. So while Omni excels at conveying information, it's not great for connection and voice and can sometimes be difficult to write. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't use it, but I don't think it's a good place to start. So, dear viewer, which point of view should you choose? If you're an absolutely new writer, I would tell you to write third limited. But first person is a great option, especially if you're writing with a younger voice or for a younger audience. Third person omniscient isn't the best place to start, but if you've read a lot of that POV, you should be fine. The key though is finding a POV that fits your story. Is it character driven? First person might be the better fit since it has a high level of connection. Writing fantasy, third person limited will probably work better. Your epic spans seven novels, each containing a dozen characters involved in intricate plots. Third person omniscient might be the move. If you're still having trouble deciding, write a scene or chapter of your story in each point of view and then read them over and show it to friends. There's usually a clear winner. If one of these feels like a good fit for you and your story, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our deep dives coming up over the next few months. Also, thank you to Man Carrying Thing for helping out with the skits in this video. Have a good day and thanks for watching.
I don't know how I feel about that. That kind of, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Murph is in the window. Can you see her? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, she's just gonna be there. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. 